Hello and welcome to This Is. Are movie theaters as we know it dead? I mean, obviously, right now, movie theaters are going through a tough time. With social distancing becoming the norm, it's difficult to, say, go hang out with your buddy Matt and watch movies. Uh, first of all, if you knew anything about me, you'd know I do not want anyone with me when I go to the movies. I remember we went to the movies with our editor, Josh. It's a dead silent theater. Movie's about to start and suddenly you just hear, Look, look, we're not here to put Josh on blast. <laughs> so I argue. Yes. Obviously, yes, theaters are going through a hard time right now. A lot of them, well, not, I mean, all of them have closed down really. And not immediately. I want to make it clear. What my, the point I'm about to make, I don't think is going to be an immediate thing. But in the next, like, say, five years, movie theaters are not going to be a thing. Please walk me through that very controversial statement that I strongly disagree with. Recently, uh, Universal, Disney, like a whole bunch of studios have started talking about doing in theater releases of movies or either super advanced um, releases for home video. Right, so right. right now, Amazon currently has four in theater options. It's actually a, a new category they have. On Prime, yeah. With Disney's Onward, you can purchase that for $20 right now. Oh, you can purchase, not rent. You can purchase that one. Oh. And uh, that's and that's to be clear. That is a Pixar movie that came out a few weeks ago. Yes, very recently. And I'll get into that in a second. But also, they have like uh, Universal. They have The Invisible Man, yep. which you can rent for twenty dollars. You get thirty days rental with it. Wait, thirty? I've never rented on Prime before. So it's so thirty one, days. So once you hit like purchase or, or rent, I guess in this case, yeah, you have thirty days to watch it. And as soon as you oh. start watching it you have 48 hours to okay. finish the movie. So this is actually completely unprecedented. They've never done anything like this. And this is something that's really been requested by people in the past. When TVs came out, people said the movie theaters were, de were gonna die. When cable came out, they said the movie theaters were gonna die, still here. And then when they said video on demand came out, that would be the end. But really, it, it never happened. And if anything, movie theaters have gotten better. They've changed their policies on what a movie theater is for, right? Like right? Movie theaters have gotten more expensive, but they've had to sort of become more premium, right? How many theaters in the last few years have switched to like reclining right. seats and like offering things like uh, food and drink when you're in the theater? And that makes sense because if you just wanna watch a movie, like you said, wait a few months, rent it on, you know, iTunes or, right. you know, watch it on Netflix or whatever. But the theater has evolved to give you a more premium, higher end experience. I would argue that it makes sense that that's something you can't really get at home. You're not gonna have people you know, bringing you food and obviously getting the great experience on the display with the sound, Dolby and like IMAX and everything. They're really trying to push things up market. And I think once things get back to normal, not to completely disagree with your entire point, but I completely disagree with your entire point in that I don't think movie theaters are going anywhere. <laughs> I don't think it's a movie theater thing that's gonna cause this. Okay. So like, you're right. Movie theaters are no longer a place to go see movies. They're a place to go do everything else that happens to- Experience. Yeah, that happens to show movies. Yeah. Like, we love going to the Alamo Draft House, mm -hmm. which is a bar, a great restaurant. Oh, and by the way, you can go see a movie there. And eat in the theater. Right. The reason I say that the movie theaters are gonna go away is because really the studios aren't gonna have a whole lot of a incentive to push their premieres to movie theaters. So I'm gonna make a very simple generalization here. Okay just for the sake of math. So the way that studios and movie theaters work is say opening weekend, Avengers Endgame. The studio made 90% of ticket sales for that first weekend, but then maybe say the second weekend, they get 80%, third weekend, 70% and so on and so on and so right. on. So the movie theater is making next to nothing on your ticket. Obviously that's why they've been pivoting to serving alcohol and food and concessions because that is almost purely profit. I mean, look, that $8 bag of popcorn costs them like 45 cents to make up. Correct. Sure. With something like the video on demand that Universal's doing, yeah. they are one step closer to completely eliminating the middleman because the studio does not care how, uh, mm. how much concession gets sold. They don't care. They don't that, make anything on that. Yeah, they get nothing. Although. Fun fact, I'm gonna tell on your behalf. You used to actually have a job installing uh, yes. projectors. I, you were upgrading projectors. I, I, was, I had a job upgrading projectors. This was back in, I think about 2010, 11-ish, um, when theaters made the official uh, switch from film projectors to digital projectors. Those were about $50,000 projectors. A lot of studios would kind of loan them out or like off, they helped offset the cost. Yeah. But for smaller studio, uh, smaller theaters that still couldn't afford it right away, 
or had to get one later, a concession company would actually pay for the projector for them. That's part of why concessions have gotten larger and larger and larger. Yeah. Is because there's so much, like, everyone's taking a bigger slice of this. But Matt, I love to spend $50 on a really mediocre meal for my wife and I when we go to the theaters. Hit me with the hard hitting facts right now, Matt. Right. Change my mind. Try to explain to me why you were right and I'm wrong. This is the first time that studios have let regular people watch a in-theater movie at home. And I say regular people because there oh, is yeah. a service of like all, for the ultra rich, which costs like tens of thousands of dollars where you could actually like get your own projector and you can actually get it like in theater movies. That's not us. We're not, we're, we're the peasants down here. But so this is the first time that they're doing it. Yeah. Now, right now, we don't know what the, the, um, the numbers is. We don't know how successful this has been or how unsuccessful it's been. Right. And we don't know how much Amazon has taken, which is a, 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 a big factor. Is it comparable? Is it more with upcoming services like universe NBC universal streaming service? They can completely cut out the middleman. Mm. And so if you go and and rent a movie on their platform, right. it is 100% profit going direct, not, I mean, not 100% profit, but it's, but pretty it's much, 100% yeah, it. going to Universal. Okay. There is no middleman. I'm going to, I'm going to clap back as the kids say. Yes, and hit you with back. a couple of other, other points. Okay. First of all, a lot of people have been pointing out that with streaming services like Disney Plus and Peacock and all these other streaming services that are owned by the studios that are making these movies, people are like, why don't they just put them on the streaming apps? But that would be dumb because you're paying what? Eight bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, whatever. Whereas these movies can make, you know, what? Selling 10, $15 tickets. They can make hundreds of millions of dollars in one weekend by selling it. And then they have the trailing revenue of then they sell the rights to, you know, to go to TV and to hit the streaming service oh, yeah. and everything. All right, I have some statistics here from oh, you. Oh no, from... Matt, don't hit me with statistics. Yes, according to NATO, and not that NATO. Yeah, what? Yeah, it's, it's, Whoa, they need on. a way better acronym. <laughs> it's the National Association of Theater Owners. In the United States, all right, the average ticket in the U.S. costs between $9 to $10 to go see a, a, a movie. Like, obviously, we live in yeah, L.A. Yeah, say, what? If we saw a $9 ticket, we'd buy all of them, just period. Are you Here, hoarding tickets, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be out, I'm gonna be out in the back like of my car just selling tickets at nine dollars. You kidding me? For for some people, it's a bad it's a bad deal to spend twenty dollars to to rent a movie at, at home. For someone like us in LA, it's not that bad. But when you also factor in that the average person um, spends about fifteen to twenty dollars per visit in concessions, suddenly this is a really good deal because you got the guys like Josh who is still bringing in their Coke anyway. They're not buying it at the theater. You could just do that at home. Is the concession as good? Actually, you know what? You could probably make better popcorn at home than most movie theater popcorns. It's well, wait, wait, are you talking, are you are you throwing shade on movie theater popcorn right now? Yeah, just like what's the incentive? So on Universal and, and Disney is like set, they could do this with the flip of a switch. Yeah. No one is suggesting that it'd be a financial you know gain to make these these movies free. And I'm not suggesting that. You but, literally cut me off in the middle of my point. But exactly, go ahead, because Matt. that's what you Whatever. do to me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> so if, if Disney just on their platform just has a section that says, you know, rent from home, and suddenly they can just be making all this money. But Matt, you're missing a key point. What's my key point I'm missing? All of these movies will end up on Disney Plus, for example. So what are the odds that someone's going to pay to get the exact same experience that they will get for free in two to four months later? I think that's the main issue. People will be like, oh, look, that new Pixar movie came out. Should I go, if I go to the theater, I get this whole experience, it's a whole thing. But if it just shows up in the app that I'm already paying for, that I'm gonna get in a couple months anyway, I feel like there's gonna be a real, like a lot of people are just not going to do it. Because I can argue need... that one as well. Average for release from um, from theater to to home release, which is either digital or DVD, whatever. Right, right. It's that, that definition has changed over the years is 90 days because after 90 days the studio is making literally zero dollars on movies in the theater mm -hmm. which is why they then transition it over to dvd where they at least get some of the home sales right i want to make one thing clear so i don't get chased out of town with you know pitchforks and and torches i love going to the movie theater same i go two to three times a week it is it is not the same that is like what i do so I'm not saying that I am rooting for this, but I'm saying the way that the the economy for movie theaters would shift, this is what I see happening. But the thing is, Matt, this is all happening 
because of obviously the extraordinary circumstances that the world is going through right now, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, anytime that there is some kind of major disruption, industries and companies are going to take advantage of it however they can. Yep. And if the Disneys and the Universals of the world really do want to push theaters out of business, they can certainly do that and they could use this as an opportunity. However, in the wise words of Jimmy Champagne, they have not, to my knowledge, really talked that much about the numbers from some of the movies that they have released uh, through Amazon, right? Correct. That, to me, seems like a sign of weakness. That They're not seeing, you know, millions of people paying to rent these movies at $20 a pop, right? And I don't, I'm not surprised because that that's a tough sell. It's such a new thing for but people. I think I feel like theaters are going to come back, man. I feel like theaters are going to come back just as they, as they were before. They're going to continue to get more and more premium. And once the world is back to normal, I really do feel like people are going to go back to watching movies because that is the way this has been for so long. And it is an experience that you cannot translate that at your home, right? Some people want to watch stuff at home. Guess what? You can still watch at home. It's still going to hit Disney Plus three months later at, for free or whatever the case is. But if you want the day one experience, you want the popcorn, you want to go out on a date, I don't think movie theaters are going anywhere anytime soon. It's the early adopter mentality for mainstream stuff. So for a long, long long, long time, the only way movies succeeded was with the help of the theater. Now, they don't need the theaters. That makes sense if you take the idea the movie studios want to run theaters out of business. I'm not convinced that that's the case. Last year, how much money did they make on the 100 movies or how many ever they released I mean, that all were number one? Like every, week every blockbuster week? was about a billion dollars. Why are they going to walk away from that kind of money on a risky gamble like this, especially given that from my limited understanding of the way that these early home releases have been going, it is not huge. Obviously, that's not a fair comparison. They did not market, you know, a ton of people around like, hey, go download on Amazon or I just feel like there's definitely you never know in the future, right? And again, five, I, ten years from now. And I'm knows? I'm saying that this is a this is a minimum of five years out. Well, I look forward to 2025 where we'll do a this is update and you will be wrong. I, I'm really hoping I am wrong. I, I really just, am. Theaters aren't going anywhere. But I'm very curious. What do you guys think? Is it time for us to move past the movie theater? Are you perfectly happy watching content at home on Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Quibi, YouTube, YouTube TV, Sling? I don't know. I just hit my mic, but there's probably like 100 other options. Let us know in the comments. But more specifically, let Matt know that he's wrong. Did you just say Quibi?